Hi, this is Cheryl from Nawadi's Art, and I'm going to be sculpting tonight. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, or more of these videos where I just set up my workspace and sculpt and just talk about what I'm doing. Um, what I'm working on tonight is a custom order. It's one of my perma pets. If you're not familiar with my perma pets, they are little sea creatures that are put into jars and it's filled up with resin. This jar is all kind of dusty right now. I will clean it before I put the creature in. Um, but the one I'm doing tonight is a sea angel. This is a custom request. Um, let's see if you can see the picture on my phone. Yeah, it's one of these. They're sort of these um, very translucent deep sea um, sea slugs, actually. They look nothing like slugs, but that's what they are. Um, so I'll be sculpting it in translucent Sculpey, and if you hear something that sounds like snoring, that's my dog. She is being really, really loud snoring tonight. Um, I actually already attempted to do this once, and didn't turn out. Um, the sculpting went fine, and then I put the uh, piece in the oven. I didn't check where my oven rack was, and that happened. It scorched. So, you can see that this is what, you know, what I'm going for. This sort of shape. Um, without the turning yellow and scorching on the bottom. So what I'll be doing is I have a little centerpiece that's just uh, red, orange, and yellow polymer clay just to give that central bring out the picture again give that sort of central area of the body right here Right there, that's um, sort of reddish in the middle. And what I'm going to be sculpting around this with is um, translucent Sculpey. Uh, this is Prima Sculpey. And this is the mix that I did. It's um, mostly Primo translucent, um, the color's white, called White Frost. Now, they've changed a couple times. It used to be bleached white and it, it's their whitest translucent clay. Um, but it's still kind of a bit of an off-white. It's a little yellowy. Um, so I s mix in a tiny bit of there it is, translucent blue um, Primo accents. Just give a blue tint um, since the animal is kind of bluish. And when I'm done, what I'll do is just slightly um, brush bits of Perlex powders in these just sapphire blue and scarlet um, just on the edges um, bring out some more of the color um, what else was I going to say before I actually start sculpting? Oh yes! Um, because this is a creature that I want to look like it's sort of floating in the water These are hard to find because they're, you know, clear. Um, this is a uh, transparent acrylic rod. It's, you know, flexible. Very, very super clear. Um, fairly easy to cut. Fairly easy to actually get, like, bend it using a heat gun. But all I'm really going to do is I'm going to cut off a small piece, probably oh, about two inches or so. And mount the knot burnt, finished sea angel on it, like, you know, probably like, but like that. And then I can stick it down in the jar, and once it's filled with resin, the rod will mostly disappear. You'll probably still see the slight outline, but it'll mostly disappear, and so it'll look like the sea angel's actually swimming around in the jar instead of, um, most of my previous ones, when I do the cephalopods, um, I either put them directly down on the sand that goes in the bottom, or I'll use a rock or a seashell and glue it just so the bottom's touching the tip of the rock. But for this, because it's deep sea, I really wanted to um, make it look like it's flying, or 
well, it, it's a sea angel. It more looks like it's flying than swimming. But um, and what I'm gonna use in the bottom of this is, and it's not in the room right now, so I can't show you. Um, is a very small layer on the bottom, just enough to cover the bottom a little bit. Um, is black decorative sand. And again, I'm trying to go for that deep sea look. And then the lid, once I sculpt the lid up, will be um, shells, and I'll probably do it in black with um, an iridescent finish. I'm just really trying to get the deep sea look. And so that the sea angel is what stands out the most. Um, so that said, I'm going to stop recording this intro and reposition the camera and get sculpting. Hey, so at this point I'm actually done sculpting and I'm waiting for my oven to preheat, but I just want to let you know I somehow lost about the first 10 minutes of video. Not sure what happened. Um, I must have bumped my mouse and turned off recording, but I lost it. So um, you'll see it starting out from sort of the base shape and then I do all the detailing. Um, so hopefully didn't lose anything important. Okay, and I'm back, and um, yeah, I want to go an actual ice pack. So I'm just cooling my hands down right now. And um, yeah, hands are really cold right now. Um, but as far as the sculpting goes, that's actually the benefit. Let me just hold this in my hands a little bit, cool the clay down. And I'll probably be going back every so often and just laying my hands for a few seconds on the ice pack to cool them down. Because again, I think I'm just slightly feverish. So my hands are warmer than usual. to the first one, because again the first one came out perfectly except for the burning in the oven. on the side of the head that looks it's not a jawline but it kind of looks like a jawline to me and sometimes when you're sculpting animals that don't have a whole lot of similarity to people or vertebrates um, which are what you know most people are most familiar with I'm surrounded by vertebrates cats and dogs and other people and non-vertebrates are just, you know, some of them their anatomy is so alien to ours, you're just trying to find what makes some sort of sense, some sort of reference to get your head around the forms. So yeah, little bulges on the side of the head looks like jawline to me. Even though this obviously is an invertebrate with no jaws. If you want something kind of cool about these animals, um, Google image search sea angels feeding. And they feed in the most fascinating way. Their head, when you look at the picture of them normally, their heads look solid. You know, with these two little horn-like projections. But it's not, and their ha heads kind of come out like, ten fan out like tentacles and reach out and grab their prey. It's really cool cool looking. Um, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing the just swimming along sea angel.
kind right now is that when adding stuff, because the clay is so soft, even pulling my hands down, is that it's distorting in ways I don't want it to. So, very carefully sort of smooth that, sort of push on the clay back up towards the have the body more or less done except for little wing fins. I get work on the top of the head. Um, looks sort of this lobe-like shape. So I need to round that. problem I found with this really translucent clay, which is not a problem with other polymer clays that I get, that I use, um, is that it really blends hard. It's hard to get really seamless blending unless you just really work at it. It's just got this waxy texture that I don't like, but the final effect should be worth it. So, right. Get this sort of lobe shape that the head has. Two little horn like projections off the head. Get the. I get these balls more or less the same size. It's a little too big. Take a little bit off that one. Same one off this one. switch for my wooden tool, which is really my favorite for sculpting. I tend to prefer wooden tools um, to what is probably my favorite tool that I bought, which is a silicone tipped clay shaper. I have a whole bunch of them. Um, the sort of conical tip one's my favorite because just get into all sorts of little places with it. It's great for smoothing small things in, like these horns. That the um, larger tool, as small as it is, because it's one that I made and I have tiny hands, can't really get into certain details well. It's getting pretty close to finished. Um, pretty sure when I actually edit this video, I'm probably gonna skip out some of the 
boring bits. But we'll see. I'm not sure exactly how long this is going to turn out. Again, right now I'm getting those little wing shaped fins um, ready. So I want two balls that are just about the same size, I think. Just a little bit more of that one, and they should be the same size. So I'm just going to form them into a little teardrop shape. Flatten it out for where it's going to attach to the body. Just pinch that out into a little leaf shape. Flatten teardrop. Pinch around the edges. I want to make sure the edges are nice and thin so when it bakes it'll be really, really translucent. Okay, so the whole thing with this is that these animals are really translucent, but polymer clay, even the translucent, is not, you know, it's not glass like translucent. If I could work glass, I'd be doing this in glass because that would have a much better effect. Right. Now, just the blade and cut the end off the little thing there. Carefully attach it and blend it in. Don't need to blend it in on each side. Now at this point, all the main sculpting is done. All I'm going to be doing now is posing it a little bit. Want to look like it's swooping. I'm going to cool my hands down a bit. Cool. Actually, I'm just going to stick it. Just don't want it to touch the ice pack because the ice pack's getting condensation on it, but I'm just going to hover it just over the ice pack to cool it down. The clay will stiffen up a little bit. There we go. Alright. Now, because this was formed largely by hand, it's got my fingerprints all over it. And such a really just want this as smooth as possible. So what I'm brushing it down right with right now is 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Get this just about any drugstore that sells, you know, first aid stuff. And you can use, um, I actually tend to have three different rubbing alcohols around for clay. 91%, um, which is the 
the strongest you can get and will smooth the most harshly. Um, 70% 70, 70 which is probably the most common kind you see for first aid use. Um, and it does moderate smoothing. And then I also have a bottle of 50%. That's just for the lightest little, you know, when I'm not trying to smooth that much, I don't want to lose much detail. And as I was doing that, I ripped the wing just a little bit. Look at that. It's like, it does not want to stay on right now. I just messed up all the smoothing I did by accidentally messing up the wing. This is really frustrating, these wings, um, because the clay is so soft, the wings just do not want to stay put. Which means that all the smoothing I just did is pointless, because now there's more fingerprints everywhere. Just of all the smoothing. Let's go back in and smooth. So just a little bit of alcohol on the brush. Just trying to get the worst of my fingerprints off of here. Because once I brush the um, little bit of Perlex powder on that will smooth it some more. But and I'm going to eventually put a gloss coat over the whole top, so that will negate some of my fingerprints as well. Alright, so now that that's done, more or less, let me just. I'm gonna do, brush on the Prolux cutters and then I'm gonna pose the wings just a little bit more because I'm not liking their positioning right now. Sapphire Blue is actually new. I had to use the Interference Blue last night and decided I didn't care for it too much. So I'm going to try the Sapphire instead. And what I have for putting that on is this um, watercolor brush that I've had for ages. It also works well, and I have one of those as well, is a um, eyeshadow brush. I have an eyeshadow brush I bought just for mica powders. So it's never you know, been used on my face or anything. And it works fantastic. So I just want to brush a little bit of... yeah, that blue is perfect. Um, just on the edges. And Prolix powder is really little goes a long way with this stuff. Um, like these are the small size that you can get in packages of like I think there are nine to a set, nine or twelve to a set. I can't remember which of these tiny jars. And then you can also get the um, larger size jars that are quite, they're, they're quite big. Let's see, I just had one. Um, a 
Literally, I just had one before I started recording. And I'm not sure where I put it. Ah, there it is. So this is the small size that comes in the packs of many different colors, and this is the full size. I will never use all of this. Ever. I have some of these that I've been using for years. Of these little ones, and I haven't come close to emptying them. You need so little when you're brushing it on clay. The lightest touch imaginable is needed for these. Just. And a lot of it is, it's just, you know, like you would put, if you wear makeup, you know how to, probably know how to, you know, light, do a light layer of, you know, blush or eyeshadow. And that's what you're going for with the mica powder. Got that, got this little light. See right here? That's where my wasn't quite so light handed. So I'm just gonna try to blend that out just a bit. There we go. I think I want a little bit more up on the head right there. Brush this, brush the brush off a little bit on a piece of paper towel that I have down here. Get all the blue out of it, and then go on to the scarlet. Um, now the scarlet is actually more of a, I wouldn't really call it scarlet, it's more of a corally orange rather than true red, and that is the one problem I have with Prolux powders, is that they don't have they don't really have anything that's a true red, um, which is too bad. I mean, they have some beautiful pinks, and this color, which is gorgeous, I love it, this coral. Um, they have a nice salmon color, um, and they have the uh, interference red. But they don't have any true reds, which is kind of disappointing. Um, if anyone knows a mica powder um, that's similar to Pearl X that has true red, please let me know. I would love to get a true red. So I get sort of a, you know, get some ir better iridescent red finishes and stuff. This already has a little bit of the blue on the tip of the tail. I'm going to use my fingers to really kind of get a stronger amount of that in there. And I'm just going to do this little bit down the center of the body, right over where that core is, just so it mimics the shape of that inner area, which is, as pretty as it looks in the picture, is its digestive system. All right. There we have it all sculpted and my good. Let me just, just want to shape the wings just a little bit more. Tip them up. Tips. There. I'm gonna get the pan down. Right. Now to put this in, this is polyfill, polyester, just polyester batting, kind that you, you know, get at any craft store for use in, you know, stuffed animals and quilts and stuff, and just use it to create a little nest 
The great thing is this stuff does not burn at polymer clay temperatures. And it keeps it up off the bottom, or, you know, away from the heating elements. Which is great. And gives it some support. I just want to get one of my hairs in here and I want to get that out. There we go. Alright. Just get that nestled down in there. Alright. Put the long way in the pan. So I'll stick this in the oven at, um, the baking temperature you're supposed to put it in is 275, but I found it can darken just a little bit, especially because I use a toaster oven, not a full-size oven. So I'm going to turn the oven on, um, after I turn the video off, because you really don't need to wait for 25 minutes while this cooks. Um, turn my toaster oven on, let it heat up for a while, then put this in, um, let it bake for about 20-25 minutes, at about 260, slightly under the recommended baking temperature, and I'm going to do it for longer, because this really needs only about 15 minutes, I'm going to give it 25, um, and that should get it baked up quite nicely. Um, I'll check I'll check it at 25 minutes, see if it needs a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to stop the video now, and then come back once it's baked. Okay, so the Sea Angel is finished, and I can show you the, the result. Okay, so this is the one that went in and got burnt. And it had pretty much the same clay mix, the, the slightly tinted blue. You can see how very yellow and brownish it turned. And this is the one that actually turned out right. You can see that it's, you know, got closer to the same shade as the clay was when I sculpted it, except, you know, more translucent. And see, if using the light on my phone, and see just how Figure out a way that all this will there we go. Yep. There. See just how translucent this is. So that's the more or less the finished result. Um I still need to give it the gloss coat. Um, but that's real quick, doesn't take long, and I'm not going to be painting any additional details on it. Then it'll just be um, finishing up the jar, putting the sand in, attaching the acrylic. You know, once I figure, figure out how long the acrylic needs to be. Um, I'm just getting the little guy down in the drawer. Um, there is one more piece of sculpting that I am going to have to do for this, which is to cover the lid of the jar in uh, sculpted polymer clay, which will be a black um, design, probably seashells, and then iridescent finish. Um, but that's it. That's the finished Sea Angel, or at least part one of making the Sea Angel perma pet. And look for part two soon. Bye.